Yeah, my name is Rashid Ade on Gio Mokafe, the striker of Nada World. You are watching Talk Me World on TV. Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Offside with Ken Gaddafi right here on Talk Me World TV. Uh, it's Super Sunday, the finals day of the EPL 2016. Of course, Leicester are the crown champions. We know this already. But there's still a lot at stake today. For this final game, who is going to be the runner-up? Is it Tottenham Hotspur? Is it going to be Man City? Manchester City? Or is it going to be Arsenal? Well, with me on this program today is one of Arsenal's die-hard supporter. No other than Mr. Norman. Mr. Norman, it's my pleasure to you. Ken, my pleasure too. Yeah. Great to see you. Great to be here. Yeah, well, no man, um, so far, how has it been uh, uh, for Arsenal, I mean, with you, with regards to Arsenal this season? This season has been, uh, I hate to say it, it's been typical Arsenal. It's been the enigmatic Arsenal. Um, what are you going to get with Arsenal on any given season? But I'm going to come to their defence a little bit. We don't like making excuses, but I do think we need to consider that this season, um, it was a perfect storm in which we were unable to win the title. And I think people forget, and Arsenal fans can be a little bit blinkered sometimes in forgetting the, the key parts of the season where we were without Jack Wilshere, yeah. uh, Alexis Sanchez, and... I think more importantly, uh, Santi Cazorla, because I'm of the opinion that Cazorla, above all of our players over the last two or three seasons, has been the man who really has made things tick. It's not to take anything away from Sanchez and Ozil, Ramsey, but I think Cazorla's been the main man, and I think he was a big loss, a big part of the season. Added to that, you had this tour de force, Leicester City, who just came from nowhere, um, blindsided every team in the, in, in the league, and um, yeah, the result is we didn't win it. Um, a disappointing season, but brilliant season for football with Leicester City. Yeah. Well, well um, the, the, like you said, Arsenal, it's been typical Arsenal, 12 years without winning the title. Uh, a lot of people have criticised Arsene Wenger. Right. Uh, what's your opinion on this? I understand the criticism, but I believe the lens of history will look back at Arsene Wenger as, as a great manager for Arsenal. And let's not forget and I'll pre-qualify this by saying I don't really like it when I hear Arsenal fans say the last 10 years, the last 12 years have been a failure. Let's not forget, 2003, Mourinho came into uh, to, to Chelsea, Roman Abramovich, um, and in many ways changed the, fa the face of football at that time with a the, the huge injection of money. Added to that, that Wenger had built this, this, this club at Arsenal where we had this fantastic new stadium, the Emirates Stadium, that was still not paid for. So way past 2005, not until just a few years ago, was that stadium actually considered bought and paid for. So at a time when we had Chelsea, uh, Man United putting huge amounts of money into their squads and, and dominating the Premier League, Arsenal didn't have the financial clout to do that. It, it, it was beyond us. So I don't think we should say for 12 years we were a failure. I think for a number of those years, Arsene Wenger performed a miracle just getting into the Champions League. Absolutely. I, I, I agree with you. But now, um, with the last game, we play Aston Villa. Um, if we win, there's a chance that we can finish second or third. Okay? Absolutely. But, but, but looking into, I mean, going to this game, uh, or the last two or three games Arsenal has played. I mean, uh, it's look, it looks as if are the players playing for themselves or are they playing for, for Wenger? Uh, look at the last two to draw against Man City. I mean, they were almost uh, all over Arsenal, you know, but at the end of the day, we scrapped the draw. I mean, what really is? Is the spirit gone or what? It's a concern, Ken. Now, to, to, to frame this for you, you know, I, I 
you know, in my younger days, when I lived in England, I used to go to Highbury and watch Arsenal. And I had the privilege of, you know, sitting behind the goal, listening to Tony Adams screaming out orders at a corner and so on. Yeah. And that guy, he was a player who would die for the club. He was Mr. Arsenal. Exactly. Um, you know, we, we, we uh, to think of the, 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 you know, Robert De Niro in the movie Any Given Sunday, when he talked about fighting for the inches, you know, that's what Adams did. Yeah. He fought for every inch in the game. My worry, if I have any concern with Arsenal at the moment, do we have a player? who lives and breathes the club, who will die for the club. Possibly we do. And it's possibly Jack Wilshire. A lot of people have got negative opinions on Wilshire. I've been following him since he was in the youth team. He's an incredibly gifted individual. Hasn't played a full 90 minutes for Arsenal in two years. If Wilshire can get an injury-free run, maybe he's going to make the difference. But you talk about this Villa game, where we have an opportunity to possibly finish above Spurs, which is never our aim. But it's interesting how, for many Tottenham fans, their aim is to finish above Arsenal. But I think the sign of a strong club is to aim to win the league. Um, I would, I would hope they go into that Villa game fired up uh, with with Wilshere spurring them on, saying, "Look, guys." and hopefully this will be the case, we have a chance of coming second. Not we have a chance of finishing above Spurs, we have a chance of finishing second, which is, it's not a perfect season, but we haven't come second for a long time. And I think it would lead us into the next season with a confident squad, making us more attractive for some good signings over the summer. Well. We've been talking to Norman, we'll take a short break and I'll be back to ask him some more important questions concerning Arsenal season. Just stay tuned. Subscribe to talkmewo.tv